Well, welcome to the show, folks. Today, I get to chat with my friend, Sherry, who is in my home state of Tennessee. How are you today, Sherry? I'm great. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, thanks for being on. And, you know, we're kind of friends in the philosophy space. And Sherry is among a group of folks who have started a wonderful libertarian charity. And what's the name of it? It's called Voluntary Virtue. Perfect, perfect. And and by the way, folks, as you might know, I am also on the board of directors. So I'm going to kind of try to, I want that to be transparent. So I'm going to try to kind of ask her questions uh, from the perspective that I don't know the answer to all of them. I do sometimes and sometimes I don't. So uh, just for transparency sake, yes, I'm also on the board of directors, as is Sherry. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what is the goal of voluntary virtue? Uh, the goal of voluntary virtue is to uh, provide aid and assistance to, to folks that may be having kind of a hard time uh, and do that in direct competition really with the government. We want to replace government in people's lives. And in order to do that, we want to build what we want to see in the world. So that's really what we're out to do is help people and, and provide an alternative. I like that idea. And, and I'm not a conservative, but my conservative friends, I've heard them be challenged with, well, yeah, but but if, if the government was tiny, who would do this or that? And then people who are in the, the libertarian space as we are, um, are asked the same question. Yeah, but who, who would build the roads? Who would provide charity? <laughs> and I love that this is this is kind of the answer. You and, and Patrick Smith and, and Christian are, are raising your hands and saying, oh, we'll give it a shot. Uh, let, let's see if we can have a good solution for this. And I, I applaud you for that. Uh, how long have you been involved in this? And uh, I mean, how long has this been a concept that you guys have considered? Uh, actually, it's it's not been all that long. It was just earlier this year. Um, I, I think it was mulling around in uh, Christian's head a little for a little while. Uh, and then in Patrick's and then they brought me in. Uh, but yeah, just a, a, earlier this year, I was visiting Texas and uh hanging out with both of them. And they kind of said, Hey, let's talk to you about something. And so um, it's, that's the, where the seeds were planted. And I thought it was a great idea because I, you know, I'm all about trying to build that, the things we want to see in the world rather than just, you know, complain all the time, which you can fall. I've, I know I've fallen into that trap before too, where uh, kind of social media, you feel like engaging on that is, it, it does maybe help to change people's minds sometimes or refine their thinking, uh, but it's not always uh, activism in the sense of actually building something. So that's what we wanted to do, and, and I'm really thrilled to be a part of it. I, I love that idea of, of us keeping everything positive, and you know, there are certain information outlets that I, I look at, and I get sucked into that, and there, there I am <laughs> evading personal responsibility. I allow myself to get sucked into it, and two Me or three <laughs> hours later, I say, oh, I have so much valuable information, but it's not making my world happier, and there's nothing that I can do about it, and it kind of takes me back to the thing that uh, the, the Stoics said that the, the Alcoholics Anonymous kind of borrowed from them, which is, you know, look around you, uh, see what you can change, see what you can't, uh, have the courage to change that which you can and that which you can't, don't stress out over it. Yeah. And I'm yeah. not sure that's an exact quote. Right. Yeah. I know. I, a lot of times people like I haven't watched the news in years and my parents just don't get, they think, how can you not be informed? And you're not informed either. All you're, you're just being fed this negativity constantly of what, you know, the mainstream media who we know are liars want to tell you all the time. And it just makes you feel bad. And there's nothing you can do in that situation. That's already happened, right? The the little kid that something happened to, that's already happened. You you can't fix that. So um, why just know all the negative things? It's not about being informed necessarily. It's about having principles and understanding when you're presented with things, how then to operate. So that's yeah, I sort of... Take. <laughs> I, I, I like that idea. I like that idea. And we, we actually had a meeting uh, that you weren't able to attend uh, yesterday, a little breakout session. And part of what we talked about there is, is do we only want to help libertarianish type folks or not? And if, if we do only want to have, help them, then what is our excuse for not helping other folks? And we kind of talked about how there are 7 billion critters running around on this rock that, that are human critters, and we can't help everybody. And 
each charity, every group or individual has different pre uh, preferences and biases and such. And there are many groups that are helped by existing charities. And, and a group that isn't so much are people who are, I don't know, intellectually consistent in their yeah. principles of, of, is it the, the, the NAP, right? Is that kind of, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's kind I of our thought. I and mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, especially just starting out, of course, we want to help those in our own community first. I think that's only always really where you start, you know, the, the old saying charity starts at home is sort of it incorporates that idea that your first priority should be yourself and your family and then outwards to your community and voluntarists being such a small, you know, group of people, really, when you consider those 7 billion critters, as you said, um, you know, there, there's not a lot of, of stuff out there to just for them, you know, we as voluntarists had we have to create those things for ourselves. And I think that's what uh, we're trying to do with voluntary virtue. And then also maybe as we grow to out, you know, have more outreach to other parts of the, the world, but um, definitely staying consistent in, you know, not getting entangled with politics and, um, you know, government and things like that, that are against what we would uh, want to see in the world, which is, voluntary transactions and without the government stepping in because so often people don't think that other people are good enough and that they won't do the things that need to be done to help their neighbors because government has stepped in and gained a monopoly over even charity with you know social programs and things like that and so now people have come to rely on that and they forget the past where people did help each other and and there were lots of organizations where people were taking care of their own communities, uh, but that kind of falls off when you get this um, monolith, this big leviathan that steps in and, and really um, it sort of makes people forget that we care about each other. Humans care about each other and want to take care of each other and help each other when they can and genuine help, not, not welfare that actually cripples a lot of people. Yes, yes. And, you know, I, I look at the my childhood growing up in Tennessee and up on the Cumberland Plateau in a Mennonite community and, and how that was kind of a, a little society removed from the norm or the, or the mainstream. And yeah, everybody would help. And I remember as a 13-year-old a boy fighting a, a, a fire in a, in a house. Somebody's house was burning down, so it was all hands on deck. No, I didn't have training. Yeah, I could have been hurt by smoke. But when neighbors need help, you go help them until the fire department can get there in 30 minutes. And you just yeah. jump in and get done what needs to be done. And I, I love that idea of kind of almost putting the government out of business by yeah. stealing the stuff that they do. I, I, I think about that when I go to Tucson, my grandkids are there and, and I take them to the park and there's trash all over the place. They don't clean it up very well. Well, I always have a bag with me and I, I pick up a bag full of trash every time I go. And my thought is if another dozen people a week did that, there'd be no reason for the parks and rec cleanup crew to even exist. If everybody just jumped in and, and you and voluntary virtue are, are in essence doing that for charity. Is, is that an accurate analogy? I, th I think so. I think so. Um, you know, we, I, I grew up similar to you in, in that I grew up in a small mill town in Chattanooga, Tennessee. My parents worked in cotton mills and when people needed help, you know, they would often find maybe some money in their, their mailbox or, you know, we would bring food to people who were sick or needed it, groceries if someone had lost their job, but that, that extended so far and that community could see, well, this person's not really doing what they should to, to progress and, and find more work or, you know, they need a little bit more help. They're trying. So bringing those things down to the communal level where people can really help each other and not, um, provide things that don't actually help people maintain their dignity and move forward with their own personal responsibility. But yes, I, I believe that, that when people don't have to, like, I've, I've talked to, to people before who's like, well, that's what my, my taxes pay for that, you know, and they always kind of put it off on someone else. And really freedom, liberty requires personal responsibility. And you can't have freedom without having personal responsibility. So like you said, taking care of your own community, picking up a little trash. And I, I do the same thing, you know, like just try to teach my kids too, that you just see something that needs to be done. You can just do it. You don't have to wait for someone else or to be told or allowed to do it. Just do it. 
and if you can and, and help people and you'll actually be contributing to making your, where you live better than it was before, even with just small acts. Yeah, I, I so agree. And I'm, I'm glad we're on this journey together. And, and so just a, a question, you are kind of the person in charge of media outreach and or, or public relations, or tell me a little bit about your niche within the board and, and what you're going to be focusing on for the rest of uh, 2021. Right. Well, I am the chief marketing officer, uh, which is really big shoes for me to fill. I've never done that before, but I'm certainly learning a lot and I'm trying to, I say, grow into that position. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm in charge of content and getting it out there, especially on social media and uh, reaching out to people and, you know, just marketing, advertising, making sure that we are in front of people so they know that there's even an opportunity out there like this where they can give to uh, a group that is not only going to help people, but do it in the most efficient way possible uh, with the most transparency possible. I know it's very important for you and myself and the other members as well to be very transparent and very um, thoughtful about how those funds are used uh, because we, we want to maintain our credibility and our own um, you know, principles in doing that. And so uh, I think that will certainly help people to feel safe about giving to our organization, whether through funds or, or time. And uh, I am really happy to be a part of it. I, I am so excited also. We chatted some yesterday about how we're probably going to make so many mistakes um, as we get <laughs> this thing up and going, uh, but we're going to try to make them on the small level while it doesn't do a, a lot of damage. And as we start up, we're not going to have a bunch of money to give. We're going to be looking for donors, but as a philanthropist myself on a small scale, I'm very careful about where my charity money goes. It's, it's got to go to a responsible place. And until we've earned that trust, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't blame anybody for starting out kind of small. You know, don't don't start out giving us a thousand bucks a month. Start out giving us a lot less. See if we're doing the right thing with it. And this is really a, a long term thing. We're we're not yeah. just hoping to be excited about it for a few months and then have it fizzle out, have a little bit of infighting, and then we explode. Right. That's we're trying to build this. And gosh, the money that's being spent on attorneys and, and having the accountants look at things like we're really making sure this foundation is solid um, yeah. so that it will last for a long time and that we we will end up having a very high uh, charity navigator uh, scores in a lot of different areas. That's uh, important yeah, I, to us. Yes, definitely very important to, to really build an ethical foundation. And, you know, the government doesn't make it easy to just start helping people, as we've learned. <laughs> So uh, we have to we have to play their game sort of and and put our ducks in a row according to what they want. But our goal really is to compete with them and show that people can do things for other people and that we can we can help in those areas and that it doesn't have to be done by government if people will just get involved and and do something. So that's our way of of building that uh, which we want to see. And um, I think that hopefully. Uh, if we if we do build more and and you know maintain this for a long time, that we can then branch out into other areas that maybe will help do the same. That sounds wonderful. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Sherry, for coming on and chatting today. And I, I hope we'll get to do this more times and and keep people updated as to what we're thinking and doing and achieving and and asking for. Um, so thank you for being on today. Anything you wanted to add, or are we all set? No, that's great. Thank you so much for having me on. And uh, I'm really excited get, getting to know you through this project and uh, being able to work with you guys. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Sherry. Bye.